G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Saturday morning here in Australia, obviously uh, sort of Friday night stateside, uh, and the markets are down a little bit. Again, the weekend sell-off, it's almost a guarantee, not quite. We do have, you know, some weekends when we're really in the, the midst of a bull run where it doesn't have the pullback, but generally they do happen and that's what we're seeing at the moment. Look, market cap down from that kind of 1.8 trillion, so down to 1.736 trillion. A uh, bit of a fake out uh, like I sort of spoke about the other day in the Bitcoin chart and we'll have a look at that shortly. Bitcoin dominance still hovering around that sort of 40%. ETH dominance 18% and GUI still very, very cheap at the moment. So if you want to you know, do any kind of smart contract stuff on Ethereum, now's a pretty good time to do it. It's still not as cheap as what you know we'd all like. We really need that single digit GUI. But look, is pretty, tway, 20 GUI is pretty good at the moment. You know, It is what it is. We can't do much about the fees. And if you're on some layer two solutions, particularly like Polygon, well, then they're almost free and you know some optimism and arbitrum and things like that are sort of coming as well so lots to look forward to but let's have a look bitcoin down four percent so it got up to i think around thirty nine thousand nearly sort of forty thousand and then dip back down to around sort of thirty six thousand and now back up to that thirty seven thousand dollar range so again as you can see for seven days it's really just kind of ranging not doing anything and again we had that kind of fake out to the upside so Again, we'll get to the charts and we'll have a look at that soon. But what's done well in the last 24 hours? Because there seems to be a bit of green there, at least on the seven days. All right, UMA's done well. Curve token continues to go up. So BitTorrent, there you go. Uh, Theta Fuel, Maker, a couple of all right gains there. Kind of nothing really too crazy, except for the UMA and Curve. They were good. And, you know, BitTorrent and Theta, not too bad. Any gains, you know, a good gain. <laughs> There's no bad gains, but again... 15% plus in 24 hours is really what I'm what I consider a good gain in cryptocurrencies So obviously we can see there's not a lot in the gains and the market is down 4% So what are we going to see when we look at losses? What has not fared well in the last 24 hours? All right, Terra Luna. Oh, unfortunately gone down. I thought it was going to bounce back uh, Nice, but look it has had a little bit of a, a sort of comeback, but yeah, not a lot Thorchain down, Internet Computer down, Telecoin, The Graph, Hedera, Hashgraph. Uh, look, a number of sort of losses there. Only one sort of bad loss. And again, same thing. 15% plus is a good gain and 15% uh, plus is a bad sort of loss is the way I see it for cryptocurrencies in the 24-hour period and when we're talking uh, in a bull market, which I believe we still are in. But, you know, that <laughs> that can be challenged for sure. So anyway, we can see, look, a number of losses, hence why we see that 4.1%. And it's because of an Elon, an Elon tweet. You know, he put the Bitcoin thing in a broken heart next to it. And yeah, no one really knows what's going on there, but the market is still heavily influenced by Elon tweets at the moment, unfortunately. All right, so that's kind of the price uh, chart. No, oh, you know, yeah, the charts. Let's go over, well, not the charts, the... Uh, market cap let's go and have a look at the bitcoin chart we can see what's going on here so again we had this fake out and i did say i expected that we were going to have fake outs to the upside and then fake outs to the downside and that's exactly what this is and i said you know we could fake out and then come back and retest this or fall back into it and we've fallen back into it so again this was and this was a daily close we closed outside but as soon as we closed outside and it was literally immediately after I was looking at the charts and we can see this chart's only got sort of you know two more hours to go and then it's midnight over in the states we are so currently closing back inside this sort of wedge here so fake out fall back in now I'm not going to be surprised if we don't have fake outs to the downside and then kind of fall back in if we can we've only got a few more days where we can kind of stay in this so really what I'm looking for is that we start to do some things like this and then we probably fake out to the downside come back in to the upside and then really I see a lot of this going on 
for quite some time. There might even be some really big sort of moves like this. What I think it is, is it's just going to be a good old-fashioned shakeout. It's going to be a consolidation period where they're going to try and, you know, make people think, yeah, it's going to the moon. Oh, no, it's going to zero. Oh, no, look, I knew it. We're going to the moon, and it's just going to be all over the place. That is what I think is going to happen for, you know, a period of time. I don't know exactly how long. It could last only a couple more days, a couple more weeks. It could last a couple more months. I just don't know, but that's what I get the feeling. And again, really, we have to break this kind of $27,000 uh, line for me to really turn bearish. But again, if it's just a wick that goes below it, I'm not too worried. It's got to be daily candle sort of closes that's going to worry. Now, just because we break uh, outside of this uh, upwards channel doesn't mean we've gone into a bear market necessarily. Traditionally, we always break to the upside of these. So, you know, if we break to the downside, that generally means a bearish trend at the very least, not necessarily a bear market. So if we break to the low side, I'm not thinking we're in a bearish, uh, in a bear market. It's just a kind of a bearish or consolidation phase. So as long as we travel sideways and really don't go below this kind of $27,000 mark, I'm not going to be too concerned. If we go below this $27,000 mark and have like, you know, more than one or two daily closes down here, I'm not too fussed if there's one or two daily closes just kind of nicking underneath and particularly wicks going maybe way down, I'm not so worried. But definitely daily closes underneath this kind of line here, that would be cause for concern. But if, whoops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Got to get rid of that. But if we just travel sideways... Well, I won't worry about it for now. But if we just travel sideways, again, even for months, literally for four or five months, if we're traveling sideways, I'm not going to be too worried. The altcoins are going to do extremely well if Bitcoin just ranges. But at the moment, it's just too much indecision in the market. So we really don't know where it's going. All right, anyway, moving on. There's only a couple of stories that I could find. Again, it's the weekend. So number one, Bitcoin bulls give conservative 10-year estimate for hyper Bitcoinization to hit. So a decade of hyper Bitcoinization is most likely, says Kraken executive Dan Held, a, a forecast that's also echo echoed by Unchained Capital's Parker Lewis. So Bitcoin may be just 10 years away from seeing mass adoption in an event known as hyper Bitcoinization. I think that's coming as well. Can it be done in 10 years? Oh, that's so hard. I mean, you know. I thought it was coming in the bull market in 2017. It didn't. I thought it was coming in this bull market. Uh, so far, it hasn't. And yeah, it, it's just hard to say. I definitely believe it is coming. Just when it's coming, that, that, that's such a hard question. There's all environmental factors that are going to go on. And I'm environmental, I don't just mean like Mother Nature environmental. The whole cryptocurrency space, regulation, you know, there's going to be people that are going to try and fight it tooth and nail to the end. And there's people that are just going to be jumping on board and really adopting it. And I think from all the legislation that's happening around it, it's almost sort of guaranteed that it's going to happen. It's just, you know, when. I think the regulation and that will definitely slow it down some. Uh, and I don't think you're going to see the same kind of crazy gains that we've seen in the past. We can already see Bitcoin's gains are getting less and less. But I still think for sure for the next 10 years, well, not for sure, it's not financial advice, my personal opinion, I still think there's going to be really good gains to be made in Bitcoin. Some really, really good gains. But they're going to be getting less and less. So, I mean, you know, Bitcoin was at $3,800, I think, at the cycle low. It's now worth sort of, you know, roughly 38000 So it's 10 x in, you know, sort of two years. And it's still not even at the peak. So I still think 10 xs are going to come quite easy over the next few years. But that is only from the peak low to the peak high. In between, uh, you know, that's going to be yet to be seen. I mean, we've well and truly 10x this time. We went beyond. We 20x, 20x getting to sort of 64,000. And if that's the high, well, then again, a 20x is still not pretty bad, uh, is, is not too bad. So we'll just have to wait and see. I definitely see it coming. I think there's still massive gains to be made in Bitcoin, but the massive gains are going to start to get less and less. But don't get me wrong, I don't think Bitcoin will ever. Be, you know this full sort of stable coin that people believe it is 
because it's going to have that limited supply. So will it have fluctuations? Yes, the volatility will just be less, but it will always sort of in the more mid to long term go up in value because there's only ever going to be 21 million of it, period. They can't make any more. So I think it is the ultimate uh, store of value. I don't think there's anything else that can beat it. Now, that doesn't mean there's not other things that can beat it in gains. Obviously, you go, you know, playing around in the altcoin space, the gains are, you know, tenfold on what Bitcoin can do at times, but they are super risky. So that's why I don't recommend people do it until they understand Bitcoin. Get some fundamental, you know, analysis, be in Bitcoin for, you know, a good six months to a year, preferably a full four year cycle, uh, and then start to play around with the altcoins because too many people come to this space and they go, you know, everyone starts in Bitcoin and that's great. That's where we should start. But then unfortunately, they take too much or sometimes even worse, all of their Bitcoin out and put it all into risky altcoins. And look, some people do really well and make, you know, wealth, uh, unbelievable wealth and life changing sort of money. But more of them go the other way. They get completely and utterly wrecked because they haven't been through a full cycle and don't understand to take those profits out and put them back into Bitcoin. And yeah, I don't wish that on anyone. And again, I've you know I've made plenty of mistakes in my cryptocurrency journey, uh, but I'm trying to rectify them and hopefully making smarter decisions now. So far, it's doing well, but you know, time is the ultimate storyteller. So you know, we'll have to see where I'm at. You know in a year's time, in two years time, in five years time, in 10 years time. But I'd like to think I've learned uh, a lot over the last sort of four and a bit years in this space. All right, moving on. So crypto payments. So Jack Dorsey, the co-founder of Twitter and CEO of payments, uh, payments firm Square, revealed his firm is contemplating creating a Bitcoin hardware wallet in collaboration with the community. So that's going to be really, really good. But what he did say is Bitcoin is for everyone. And I agree. That's what it is. It should not be kind of, you know, have too many really big players in it. And slowly over time, those big players are going to get less and less. And there's going to be more and more available. Uh, not more and more available so much. Well, there is more available. It keeps getting mined. But it'll, you know, over time be dispersed and we won't have so many people monopolizing it. Because even the big uh, companies, you know, let's say Grayscale and BlackRock and you know all these kind of companies, they're going to get in and they're going to sell it to people for a profit. Don't get me wrong, but eventually it should be in so many hands that we shouldn't have too many really big players. So he says it's for everyone. Now, it's important for us to build an inclusive product that brings a non-custodial solution to the global market. And I agree, that's what we want. At the moment, the problem is generally when you... Uh, hold Bitcoin if you want to make profit off it and things like that you have to basically give it to someone else you don't have custody of it anymore so they're trying to find ways where you maintain a hold of your Bitcoin but you can make it work for you uh, using other companies you know like BlockFi and things like that I really like BlockFi there's a link down below excuse me they're really really good I like the interest but they're holding my Bitcoin I don't excuse me, have that Bitcoin and, you know, to try and get it out, there's a process and things like that. And it can take a little while. And if something happens to them, you know, fingers crossed that, you know, the insurance, uh, they don't have insurance particularly, but, you know, the companies, because they don't really hold the Bitcoin either. A lot of their Bitcoin is within Gemini and Coinbase and things like that. So hopefully they're, uh, you know, they have insurance uh, and will pay it back. And that's how uh, the money will get back to pay. Uh, their participants, you know, that are letting BlockFi use their uh, Bitcoin for, you know, making profits. That's what it's all about. They're making a profit from doing it and they're passing on some of that profit back to its members. So again, I still really, really like BlockFi. Link down below uh, if you want to sign up. But that is kind of the issue at the moment. When we let other people use our coins, they are generally holding them. Other than some of the staking we can do, that remains with us. We just have, uh, you know, combined together with other people to stake generally is how it's working. All right, moving on, FTX. So this whole esports thing, I think it's going to be massive. It just continues to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, crypto is definitely 
on the forefront of that of that and they understand where this is going hence nfts and things i think they're going to be huge you know the whole you know gaming space and decentraland and things like that engine you know wax chilies you know i don't know which one of those is going to survive in the long run but i think that space is going to be massive so los angeles based professional sports team tsm will exchange its name or sorry change its name as part of a multi-million dollar decade-long deal with crypto exchange ftx so crypto exchange ftx will pay 21 million dollars a year for the next 10 years <laughs> far out for american professional esports team tsm aka team solo mid to change its name and rebrand to tsm ftx I think FTX, didn't they also get the naming rights to the Miami Heat's basketball stadium? I'm pretty sure they did. I know one of the big exchanges did. I think it was FTX. I mean, you know, cryptocurrency sort of stuff, it is going mainstream. And again, that's why we go back to here. Bitcoin hyperization or hyper Bitcoinization. I definitely think it's coming. And not just Bitcoin though, like cryptocurrencies in general, but I think Bitcoin will definitely sort of lead the way. Right, last but not least, really the big news at the moment uh, is Bitcoin Miami is going on uh, currently, so over in the States. So Miami's mayor, Francis Suarez, had his opening speech at the Bitcoin 2021 conference, saying that the days of a currency tethered to a central bank are coming to an end. I agree, but I don't think this is going to happen uh, in the, you know, in the kind of very near future i think it's going to take time the central banks are going to come out with their own currencies they don't like the idea of having to use someone else's currency a currency that they can't control and so they are going to try and sort of fight this don't get me wrong they're going to get on the back of bitcoin and ethereum and all these other cryptocurrencies but they're going to want to have their own currencies that it's uh as like an intermediary between those but unfortunately i think the writing's on the wall that that's just not going to work not long term it won't people you know there's already systems being built out there that you don't need banks anymore you know people who are unfamiliar with cryptocurrencies and that they're just going to go straight to the banks because the banks are now going to start offering this stuff and they're going to be in there for, in that kind of you know bubble for a while until they realize i don't need these banks anymore there's smart contracts and things out there and you know particularly the younger generation coming up they're going to learn all these smart contracts and they're going to realize they don't need banks and so i think that the the way that banks are set up now yeah i don't think it's going to be here in the future i really do think uh, that they will become a thing of the past i'm not saying banks won't be used at all that will just be very different to how they are used today and they will basically be more smart contracts than you know the places you go into but there's always going to be some kind of element where you can deal with someone and speak to someone uh, again it'll just be very interesting to see but that's really where all the big news is coming at the moment uh, yeah Miami you know Bitcoin 2021 a lot of you know big YouTubers and you know influencers and things like that are currently there right now uh, and it'll be interesting to see what comes out of it at the end all right look that's it for me bit of a quick one today it is Saturday morning here in Australia there's not a whole lot of news but again Bitcoin this is where it's all kind of following it's in this wedge fake out to the upside back in i wouldn't be surprised if we get a fake out to the downside fall back in and again we just keep traveling sideways i'm not saying that's what's going to happen it's just not going to surprise me again this is really the level that i'm looking for if we get regular closes a couple of daily closes below this i am going to be concerned that we are in a bear market but there would need to be more than one or two and particularly if they were just kind of below here and particularly if they're only wicks then i'm not really worried at all because that's what i'm looking for that's the lowest wick that we've had for quite some time so that is what i see as kind of the you know key support resistance level all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another if you somehow managed to be on that gain train at the moment you've done well you've outplayed the market the rest of us i guess you know we just gotta for me it's accumulation time all right that's it i'll see you next time